Today I'd like to give you a tour of my kitchen and tell you about our budget kitchen remodel. This house was built in 1882. It's not a fancy Victorian house. There's nothing amazing about it. It's just a very basic old house. It has a lot of oddities, like the doors are not the same height or width, and the studs are not 16 inches apart. So any work we've done on this house has always been way more involved than we ever anticipate that it would be. Even when we budget and plan time for extra things, it's still more than we anticipate. When we first moved in, the cabinets were a kind of a toothpaste green color, and it was it was just a walk-through kitchen. So I had one wall with the stove and refrigerator and a little bit of counter, and then I had one wall with a sink, and the sink didn't look out the window. So on the other side of the kitchen was a small bedroom, a very small bedroom, it had been a porch and they made it into a room, but there was no air vents to it. So it couldn't get, it couldn't get heat in the winter. It was just a room. So in 2008, we decided to tear out the wall and make all of it a kitchen. We already had four kids at this point and I cooked a lot. So I knew I would use a bigger kitchen. Having a kitchen with just minimal counter space and then mostly just a walkthrough area was so frustrating. There wasn't room to store things. There wasn't room to work on things. It only had one window. It was so dark. So we decided to open it up. We stripped the walls down. They were just lath and plaster walls. We did one side and then we did the other side. And thankfully the whole time I had a sink because we kept the current sink and we put in a new sink in front of the window. And so I didn't have to ever be without a sink or without a stove. We just kind of shuffled things around and used the cabinets and counters and just kind of rearranged as we needed while we were working. And we did the remodel on such a tight budget. So all the cabinets are stock cabinets from Home Depot and all the countertops are stock countertops from I think Lowe's is where I found this color that wasn't so bad and I wanted something bright and airy but yet have that country feel to it because I really like the warmth of of wood and rustic type things. I was editing this video and realized that I never addressed the fact that when we first remodeled and we were finishing off the kitchen in 2009 we painted it a pumpkin orange color which was a beautiful warm color and it stayed that way for nine years about somewhere in 2018 I decided to paint it white and I wanted to brighten it up even more so now when I am in my kitchen everything is white and bright and clean and clear and I just wanted to jump in and give you an explanation for that so now back to our regularly scheduled programming <laughs> the island, I wanted a complete island, but unfortunately the kitchen isn't wide enough to have enough walking spaces all the way around if we made the island bigger and the expense of having a different stove with a flat top and an oven, it was just more than we wanted to invest in it. So a friend of ours helped us build this little bit of a wall so that we could use the more inexpensive things for the countertop and keep the stove that we had. We ended up moving the washer and dryer from what is currently Naomi's room, so it's just a very small space. It's not technically a bedroom. It does have a window. It doesn't have a closet. But we moved the washer and dryer out of there and made a closet in, in this area of the kitchen. My mom helped me tear apart a bunch of pallets and make this sliding door. In the beginning, I had wanted to tear apart a whole bunch of pallets and have a, a whole wall out of the pallet boards. Turns out, pallets are really hard to tear apart. It's a super annoying process. So we made the door and called it good. One of our friends found this weathered piece of wood on one of his work projects and he saved it for us. and. I was really excited to use it to cover up the glue lamb beam that was in here and I love the way it looks. The lighting fixture is a pot rack and I have tried hanging pots on it but it feels so crowded and cluttered that 
I didn't care for it, so I just keep my pots and pans in the cupboards, and I like the open feel that it has. The trunk is where I store all my baking supplies and the dog food, so it's not a nice, pretty, organized thing, but it functions for what I need it to. And this trunk is an old antique. It came from my grandmother's family. I believe it was one of her brothers. My grandma was born in 1907. Her brothers were older than her and they traveled. So it is an, an old trunk. It's not sturdy enough to sit on, which we used it for a window seat for many years and then um, it got weaker and weaker. And maybe someday I will replace the trunk with a window seat that has better organized storage. But for now, I feel like this is really charming and it adds to the warmth and character of the room, which is what I want. When we first redid the kitchen, I had open shelves. I love the look of open shelves. I love like going through Pinterest and Instagram. I adore the open shelves, but they really didn't function very well for us. And I had things that I needed to put away that I didn't want to actually look at like the blender and the food processor. And because I cook a lot from scratch, I cook a lot of real foods, these are things that I use and I just don't want to see them on a shelf and I don't want to have to clean them when they get dusty. So after trying a few different versions of the open shelves, I went ahead and bought myself these cupboards and I'm really happy that I did. Naomi's door is one that was original to the house. We took it off at one point, put it outside, and then it rained and then the sun came out and dried it out and it all the paint flaked off. It was really horrible. So it looks very rustic now. But you will notice that it's upside down. So her door frame was completely worn out and people had stripped out the holes and stuffed things in and glued it and tried to fix it so many times. So instead of replacing the door frame, we just turned the door upside down. The basement door I painted with a chalk paint so we could change it up whenever we wanted. The back door we made sure to put windows in because it was just so dark in here before we remodeled. And the door that originally had been in here was actually an interior door so it was not warm. The sink I was able to find at the ReStore and I was so thrilled to have this deep sink and I have loved it. I can fill it up with dishes and you barely even notice that they're in there. So even when all the dishes in my house are dirty, it's not stacked up and crazy. It's, it's still pretty easy to hide away. So I do like that. On the other side of the kitchen, we have the bottom part of a hutch that my mom made me and she made this for me right after I first got married. So it would have been like in 95. And it did have a top part with shelves, really wanted a different look. So my husband put these shelves up for me and this has become our little coffee bar and mostly where we just stick the bread. So uh, just this week I purchased this basket and um, just something to put the bread in. I was hoping for something that had a, a lid, but lidded baskets are not that easy to find. So we have this one, it still makes it look neat and orderly, so I'm pleased with it. You'll notice around the kitchen that I have a couple of crates. I loved the crates. At one point we had crates up for the open shelves and I loved the look of them. They were not as strong as they needed to be, so I just kept three of them here and I love the warmth and the rusticness. Above the fridge is where I keep the turkey roaster. When people ask, well, what should I do about these big pieces of equipment that you only use once a year? So if you can store them out of the way, great. If you are not the one cooking the turkey every year, don't stress about keeping a roasting pan. I keep it because I usually am the one cooking the turkey every Thanksgiving. And it's not an area that I would use anyway. I wouldn't store things up there. I don't want like boxes of cereal or labels where I can see them. The turkey roaster being up there is just fine with me. I do like having the look of plants in the house. This is the only window that actually gets enough light for plants and it's indirect sunlight so it's not always great. Uh, the sun is always over on the other side of the house just the way our house is situated. This side of the house never gets sunlight streaming in. I do have a Swedish heritage. So this is a Dala horse and I grew up in Washington State in a small Swedish community called Venisburg. I get asked about these birds frequently and a friend found them for me at a craft bazaar. I 
just strung them together and hung them in the window because I love the whimsy of it. The few paintings that I have in the kitchen are, are mine. I like bright, whimsical things and I have so much fun painting simple things. Behind me, you can see I have cutting boards leaning against the wall, another crate, and then a friend of ours made this, made this little guy for a bottle of wine. At the time he made this, I had dreadlocks, so it was, it was fitting that he was making these little things and, um, and he put dreads on mine. So the bird is something my son Stephen picked out for me after he died and was resuscitated and spent time in the hospital. We ended up having to go to, back to the hospital for medications and we were wandering around trying to find something to do while we were waiting and we went into the gift shop and uh, they had these funny little birds. So this, this is one that he got. Green's my favorite color. And every time I see it, I am reminded of how thankful I am to still have him with us. This picture here was another gift from a friend. I don't normally choose words to go in the house, but it fits so well in our kitchen and the color scheme and everything. It just seemed like it belonged. The only other picture with words that I have displayed is the one on the front of our island, which is one that I painted and it was just such a blank white wall, it needed something. And I had this picture at one point above the open shelves, above the small sink, where we put the cupboards up there. I still wanted to use the picture, so I put it on this big white space that we had on the island. And I really like that punch of color as you walk into the house. And there's our kitchen. Most of it was done with base stuff we can just we could just find at the store. We didn't have any specialty items built um, other than the ones that we made ourselves. Really, we needed a new kitchen, we needed a new layout, and we needed to be able to pay for it ourselves instead of taking out any kind of remodeling loan or saving up $20,000. So this is something that we did. I can't say exactly how much we spent on it because we did it bit by bit as we could afford it, but it was at least under $5,000. I think it's so important to live within our means. And of course I would love luxury items and I love the look of granite or marble and all those remodeling shows. Everything is so beautiful. But the point of being in our home is not so we can sit back and look at how pretty everything is. Yes, we want it pleasing to the eye, but the point is really that it functions for our family and it's this place that, that we can enjoy being with them. So everything is done and it's not luxurious, but it's clean, it's fresh, it's functional, it meets our family's needs, and it meets my decor style of just having something kind of eclectic and unique to me. This video is made in collaboration with so many other awesome YouTubers, including The Minimal Mom, for some mega motivations. And if you're in that space and you need to declutter or refresh your kitchen, be sure to check out the playlist. I'll put it in the video description below. And if you'd like to join me and my decluttering army, I send out weekly emails with six 10 minute missions to work consistently through the week and invite minimalism into your home without having to invest a whole ton of time. So you can find out more information on the Clutter Free Army in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.